Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I was gonna say sketchbook for some reason. Today is Monday, so we are going to be working in my sketchbook today. So even though I have this blank spread right here, there is a drawing underneath this particular page. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward one page because I am planning to use alcohol markers. So as I'm kind of prepping my sketchbook and showing you guys my preferred supplies for today's session, the initial idea was that I was going to be using more water-based markers, picking about three colors-ish. So usually the color palettes I usually make with water-based markers tend to be three colors which is kind of the reason why I'm not showing you guys any water-based markers today, but we are going to be using alcohol markers and more specifically, we're using the Ohuhu brand. So I'm still going to be doing the line work with the Pentel Energel Klena pen that I've been using more frequently in my sketchbook because I still want to do the inking afterwards because I guess that's just kind of the mood I was in. I wasn't really wanting to do line work before and kind of coloring in the lines for today's little spread which is why I did skip ahead one page over so that we have a different spread to work on. So I don't have to worry about the bleed through bleeding into my previous page, which also had some kind of like, I guess like it was the pencil Energel pen and I didn't really want to test the waters with whether or not that was gonna pick up on the other side because I've already had experience using ballpoint pens in that manner and it completely ruined the spread because I didn't really think it was gonna pick up the ink from the ballpoint pen and kind of leave a very permanent kind of ghosting on top of my marker spread. So right now I am basically drawing out my OC Masaki and the theme for today's little spread. So if you follow me on threads, I kind of post like willy-nilly on there where I post almost everything regarding like whips. I rarely post like finished artwork on there so there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff, a lot of sketches, a lot of work in progress kind of photos on there. So you probably might have seen this particular spread and there is a particular theme of one, I guess like the color palette I was gonna initially go with alongside with just a flavor I guess which might be a little bit confusing so let me quickly talk about it. Masaki, like for my OC, he is very much like a person who has a sweet tooth and he likes like any kind of desserts, like confectionery, candy, all that stuff. So recently, for some reason, I remembered that I had a lot of matcha powder at home and I've been drinking more and more kind of like soy milk more recently because my mom's been buying that instead and it's just like in larger quantities and I've been just drinking it more often rather than regular milk because I'm partially lactose so it does make my stomach upset at some point or I feel like a little bit gassy. So I've been kind of drinking more and more of my soy milk and I'm like, ah, I kind of want to change of pace a little bit and kind of switch it up. And because I remembered that I had my matcha powder, I decided to start making the matcha lattes at home. And it's been a while since I've done that. So I've been quite enjoying like, kind of like in the early afternoon, I'll make myself a cup of that and drink it out throughout the day. So I kind of feel like matcha as an aesthetic, like a lot of the desserts or like the color of matcha where it kind of varies depending on the grade you get. I think the color and stuff kind of matches Masaki quite well. So this is kind of the spread that I ended up with, with kind of like two figures of Masaki in the center with a drink and a dessert alongside with desserts all the way around him. So I did do the sketch with the Pilot Color Eno and the color red, and I am going to be coloring on top of the sketch, kind of like without erasing and stuff, because I don't really mind if there's a little bit of sketch or bleed through of the Pilot Color Eno kind of showing through. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a lot of the color selection from the color swatches and kind of like pre-plan all the colors prior to coloring just to speed up the process a little bit. Then I'm going to color in Maseki first and I was kind of debating if I wanted to leave everything quite like flat and really rely on the kind of Pentel Energel Klena pen to bring out a little bit more of that depth and kind of adding more detail and line work. But I kind of decided not to and I do a little bit more shading and stuff and it does get a little bit messy here and there. But I do kind of tighten everything back up with the pen and it kind of gives kind of a graphic look to some of the desserts as well, which I kind of liked because it kind of feels a little bit more playful rather than me trying my best to color match things. 
Oh, I should have probably mentioned as well, a lot of the photos I was looking at for like matcha desserts or matcha flavored items, I was just browsing on Pinterest really quickly. So a lot of these might not be 100% accurate to the color profile. One, because of my phone color makes everything more warmer. So all the greens were not as like cooler or very bright. And then the second thing is that um, sometimes I forget to pin items. So I don't have the reference directly with me anymore once I get to the painting or for the coloring portion in this case. But there are some of the desserts that were like within the first kind of like search results so there were some that I could reference quite easily which tends to be some of the items on the sides so a few of the cookies I think were still very much easily accessible for me to look up the other ones took a bunch of digging so I wasn't really sure about like color matching as long as like I feel like the visual representation of the dessert was kind of there I thought it was kind of fine so Hopefully that doesn't bother too much people with like, or too many people with the fact that a lot of these might look not too, I guess like realistic because I wasn't really going for that look and it becomes more evident once we start doing the line work anyways. So as I'm coloring, I wanted to thank you guys for always liking my OC content. I'm really thankful that you guys adore my OCs because I've been kind of enjoying drawing them a little bit more here and there. and. So even though I've been kind of like thinking about them a little bit more and a bit about their story, there's nothing that's going to be like super concrete, but hopefully in the future, once I get a few of their kind of like reference sheets done and maybe in the future I will do like full illustrations for like individual characters like I've done for Masaki and Kaisen and Sato in the past, I will definitely talk a little bit more about either their interactions with other OCs or their relationships alongside with like personalities, especially of my um, newer OCs, just so that people will be, I guess like a little bit less confused on who is who and like their vibe with other OCs and how they mesh and stuff. But for now, I'm gonna keep it a little bit more open and allowing myself to be a little bit more flexible with what I want so that I'm not like making things concrete too soon without like having to backtrack too much of the things I've said in the past. But kind of with that being said, hopefully next week-ish, I am going to be tackling those OC scenarios. And there was plenty of like very fun ideas, very wholesome, very cute ones, and some silly ones. So I'm excited to try some of them. I'm just a little bit intimidated in terms of how I want to portray each of the scenarios. Like either I'm going to do maybe comic style or like sketch page style or like a full illustration. I think it might depend on what the suggestion is. I know there is one that's like a Monopoly one and I have that one planned out already and I think it's gonna be very fun to work on and it might be like the main focus for that video for the most part, but I'll definitely sprinkle in a lot of the other ones uh, with footage of me working on different like portions of the art uh, that helps to describe that scenario, if that makes sense. So as I was kind of working on the coloring portion for the, I guess like for Masaki mostly, I guess it wasn't too bad for like some of the, the desserts because some of them have a little bit more of that texture and you know, a little bit of variety so that kind of like splotchiness or patchiness wasn't too much of a bother, but I kind of forgot how much blending I usually do for some of the marker stuff in the sketchbook because it is like lighter notebook paper. I feel like, it handles the marker actually quite well and it blends quite nicely, but sometimes like certain layers or certain colors definitely makes some areas look a little bit more splotchy or if I'm not too careful then the strokes are very evident. But there's some parts like in Masaki's sleeve where I decided to just leave it as is because I am going to be adding line work and stuff and trying my best to like I said, tighten everything up with the line work so that it appears a little bit more cleaner than it actually is. Because I didn't really have like too much of a whole idea of how I wanted to like, I guess like the layout of everything to be. So in the end, I decided to add a little bit of a drop shadow for each of the desserts. I think the one that looks like a little truffle on the left side so like the second dessert from the top left and then the very bottom cookie in the bottom right they have a very weird shadow one is because i was playing around with the color and i didn't know what color would work the best so i decided to go with this kind of neutral warmish gray color 
but initially I was going to use a purple because that tends to be my go-to, but it just looked a little bit off with the warmness and kind of like the earthier tones of everything else. So I feel like it didn't really fit if I used purple right off the bat. So I decided to stick with that color for the most part. But yeah, I think if you guys are, I don't know if, if you have to be a, like a dessert person, but if you have a favorite like sweets or dessert, definitely let me know. I'm always interested in like trying to make new things eventually <laughs> in terms of like baking or making sweets or cooking and stuff. And I've only made like a very small handful of like matcha flavored things. I think more recently I did like shortbread cookies and my friends liked them so I was kind of glad. I kind of want to go buy more, what is it called? White chocolate chips. I kind of forgot because I did go grocery shopping today, but I think like white chocolate chips or like macadamia nuts or even almonds or something would be great for like matcha cookies or like the shortbread version. So I might, I might go back and like pick some up maybe in the future so I can use up more of that matcha powder, even though I've been really enjoying making lattes. But I do want to see if I can find a more ceremonial grade, I guess, or kind of one that's a little bit less of like, I don't know, higher, I want one that's like higher quality because I actually want to see if I can taste the difference rather than uh, using the brand that I currently have. That's, I feel like it's an okay brand. It's not too bad. It's usually used for making just like normal matcha tea or like even iced version of the green tea. So that's how I've been mostly drinking it because I drank a lot of like iced cold matcha tea in the morning for a while because of, I think it's my friend's acquaintance. When we were in Japan, we stayed at his Airbnb for a few days and that's what he gave us for breakfast and it was really lovely to have in the morning. So I've been doing that for quite a while. And then I stopped drinking matcha for quite a bit, like other than like maybe the soccer co boxes or like here and there, I would drink matcha. But maybe it's because of milk. Like I usually have matcha flavored items with like milkier products. It usually upsets my stomach. So I can kind of leaning myself away from it, if anything. So enough talk about my digestive system. Let's talk about inking. So I've talked about this pen for probably, is it the last two videos that I did with kind of like the sketchbook format? I talked about this pen. So I've been still enjoying this pen actually quite a bit. I definitely find that it does still have a very smooth application. I definitely think depending on how I hold the pen, it is skipping just this, like a smidge, if anything. It's not too noticeable, but it's definitely not too bad. It's just like things I'm noticing as I'm drawing more and more with it. And I think I did a very brief test on a different page where I was using the was it a water-based marker? I think so. I think I even tried using an alcohol marker and there was actually minimal bleed through, but it's not clean enough for me to use the pen first before adding in the color. So I still prefer doing the line work afterwards. And like I said in previous videos that kind of like one of my biggest reasons that I do line work last is that I don't like the feeling of making things feel like a coloring book in a sense. So this is more for when I do alcohol markers or even with, um, what is it called? Watercolors. So for those mediums, sometimes I don't like the fact that I need to keep everything contained and very clean and pristine for the look of what I want to go for. And kind of like having my lines preset before I start to do coloring stuff. Sometimes if I want to adjust shadows or I want to introduce more folds or I want to adjust something, it's a little hard to like make it budge or move or like kind of adjust or change it if your ink is already on your page because usually you can't budge it afterwards. So I tend to have to keep everything contained and sometimes it looks a little bit weird because I stray away from my lines. And I don't know if it's like, I don't think I'm too particular if I accidentally go out of the lines and I think partially it's because of when I do inking on top afterwards. I don't even follow like where I sometimes place color so I just kind of wing it for the most part and if there's bleed through I don't really mind if I kind of outline excess I also don't mind so it's kind of like all up to preference but I definitely like adding more detail or like 
kind of deciding on a whim whether or not I'm gonna add like, oh, I wanna add more ridges or I wanna add texture or I wanna leave um, more of like a skipping kind of method to my line work to make it look a little bit more interesting because the breaks in the lines just make things look a little bit less like clean and pristine. It gives a little bit of visual interest sometimes. So it's like, I can kind of make those decisions on the fly and reference what I've already have for the color. And a lot of the time, because my line art is the darkest thing on my page, as long as I can make the decision by the inking portion, usually I can slowly push things to look a little bit more how I want it to look because the ink is so bold and dark and it kind of draws your eyes a little bit more, more so than like the color. So for me at least, there's like, an easier time shifting my inking process a little bit to fit my colors or at least draw attention to it rather than the opposite where I'm trying to kind of like conform all my colors to make sense with my line work which I think is like sometimes a bad habit because the lack of structure kind of makes things a little bit wonky let's say even with Masaki's hands right here especially on the larger one I did not see my sketch clearly, so I colored his hand very roughly. And then when I did the inking, I was following where I was placing the skin flesh color of his hand. So it became like a very wonky hand and it didn't really make any sense. So sometimes even just like when my brain goes in autopilot mode, when I do inking, it might not look correct. So yeah, it's just things I probably have to work on being a little bit more conscious about balancing or trying to figure it out before committing to it. So it does require more thinking probably than I'm probably used to, if anything. But I kind of liked a little bit more graphic lines for the, the food, if anything. I don't draw food super often, but I also wasn't really attempting to do anything that was like realistic. And I kind of like the more cartoony graphic look that the lines give the entire spread. It also makes sure that Masaki kind of fits in the environment as well, so he doesn't look too out of place. So I think it just looks really cute. Also, I really took advantage of the kind of break of like dot dash dot dash for the entirety of the lettering. And it just kind of helped making it look a little bit more consistent, if anything, and not too bold because I kept having those breaks within the lines, which I think is cute. I'm doing some last finishing touches with making things have a little bit more line weight variation. But yeah, I think that's it for the spread for today. I think it was a good call for me to do this particular spread with alcohol markers instead of water-based markers, just because I do like a little bit more of that color accuracy, if anything. But yeah, I think after this, this is just kind of the overview of the entire spread. And hopefully you enjoyed watching today's little process of how I did this particular spread. And you can kind of see how aggressive the bleed through is when I use alcohol markers on this page, which is why I didn't really want to sacrifice that potential other bleed through onto the other page. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video session or marker session, and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!